Hello everybody, welcome to Mike's Mike. My name is Mike. We made it to the end of 2020. This is my last video of the year and it has such a different energy than the first video of the year. If you thought we thrived in 2019, oof, 2020 is our year. There really is so much to think about. When I was thinking about what to do for my last video of the year, I thought about what I did in my first video of the year, which was ranking childhood TV shows. Like Marvel got the inspiration for Infinity War and the Avengers essentially from That's So Sweet Life of Hannah Montana. And then I also thought about what I spent a lot of time talking about this year, which was reality TV. So I thought, why don't I A plus B equals C, Pythagoras, A squared B squared, ugh, Galileo, Einstein, Boots the House. Why don't I combine those two things and rank reality TV shows? Bestie Boots, Pythagoras. No, it's Ooh. true, it's true. So that is what's happening today. I don't want to undersell how much of a big deal this is. This is a big deal, everybody, big deal. A few disclaimers before we start. First one is I'm ranking shows that I've watched some or all of. I'm not gonna rank shows that I haven't seen any of. Like there's some obscure versions of Real Housewives that people are like, this is the best version. I'm like, yeah, that may be true, but I haven't seen it. Next thing is, although I'm saying it's shows that I've watched, maybe there's some that I've watched that are iconic and I've just completely forgotten them. Even while I was making the list, I was putting the pictures into the tier maker thing and I realized that I forgot I want to marry Harry. How can I forget I want to marry Harry? And yet I did. And the last thing is, sorry if this video is a bit long, I do have a lot to say. There are a lot of shows to rank and also the ad rates are good in December. Eh. <laughs> Bottom tier is it's on site, brackets terrible. If I saw who produced that show on the street, I would fight them. I would just go up to them and hit them. Next we have crickets. Eh. There's nothing else I can say. <laughs> it just means there's nothing to say. Like it's just, like it's, like it's, you know? Usually with these, you go two good tiers, two bad tiers, and one in the middle. I've kind of got three good tiers, one in the middle, and one bad, because a lot of these are just, it's hard to distinguish between them. So 1 a.m. Wednesday is good reality TV that you would watch at 1 a.m. on Wednesday. So if I think about a show that would be in the uh, top tier, I wouldn't be watching that at 1 a.m. Wednesday because I'd be watching that at prime time. Next we have iconic, self-explanatory, and at the top is Beyond Iconic. If a show is in the Beyond Iconic tier, it's just as the name suggests. Here's Iconic, she jumped and she arrived at Beyond Iconic. I am stressed, let's just get that on the record. I am stressed because this is literally my entire brand on YouTube, ranking and reality TV. What should we start? I don't even know what to start with. This is such a problem. So to start with, RuPaul's Drag Race is Iconic. Excellent. And that is just like, that's point blank. That's just like done, done, done. RuPaul's Drag Race, Iconic in my mind, those two things just go together. I smell a star. Such good reality TV because of the drama, the content, the fact it's a competition, the hosting, the jokes, the memes, how popular it is off screen. It's just, it's such an iconic TV show. Then I would say RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars is beyond iconic. Oh, it was Rigor Morris, girl. Mor who's Morris? It's kind of like, you know, in Hunger Games, you have the first Hunger Games movie and you get introduced to everything, and you're like, eh. I don't know why you'd be doing that. Like, Rue literally dies. You're not gonna be sitting in the cinema like, eh. And then in the second movie, Hunger Games, Catching Fire, I was thriving. I wasn't just surviving, I was thriving in that cinema. That's literally what's happening here. RuPaul's Drag Race All Stars, the synopsis is basically drag queens killing each other much like Hunger Games, to be the last one remaining. Then I would put RuPaul's Drag Race UK in Iconic as well. It's similar to the main series and a little bit different, a little bit of extra flavor. And we have reached our first crossroads of the evening or morning, wherever you're watching this, I'm not time zoners. Drag Race Untucked, is that Iconic or is that Beyond Iconic? Almost all of the drama and the memes that you see in the show come from Drag Race Untucked. However, they over edit it and over dramatize it, which is not beyond iconic behavior, but the memes are beyond iconic. I'm gonna put it in beyond iconic. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, RuPaul's Secret Celebrity Drag Race. That is on site. RuPaul, bestie. If I see you in the street, I have to fight you. But as you can see so far, it's given me Wendy Williams. It's given me top heavy. I've got four RuPaul shows up the top and then this one down the bottom, but this one's just, it's just not it. I don't know what it was. I think it was just my expectation. The way they were talking about it, it was all under wraps and everything. I was thinking Harry Styles is on it. Harry Styles is on Secret Celebrity Drag Race and they actually show it and it's it wasn't Harry Styles. 
I'm not gonna be mean to people. Let me just say just, it wasn't Harry Styles. Okay, Flavor of Love. That's beyond iconic. Her breath smelled like straight up shit. It smelled like a toilet full of nasty ass shit, okay? The memes. The memes, may I direct you to my Flavor of Love video. I was gonna say music video. Almost like I'm a singer with music videos. I could, I could be a pop star because I could serve visuals. You've got New York, you've got Pumpkin hoops, hottie. It's just beyond belief. It's beyond iconic even. And yes, it's scripted, but we're all scripted. We're living in a simulation. Nothing that you do is your free will. Wait, why is this kind of, anyway. Next we've got, I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. That's crickets for me. The only time that I'll watch it is if Gemma Collins is on it. And then she said that she would never go back into the jungle. It's hell in there, it's horror. Which means I will never be watching the jungle again. Mob wives, that's 1 a.m. Wednesday for me. I have seen episodes of Mob Wives, but I haven't seen every single episode of Mob Wives and I don't really intend to. Whereas like, even if I haven't seen all the episodes of RuPaul's Drag Race, I have every intention to do that at some point. Mob Wives, good memes, good content. It's not crickets, but for me, it's not iconic. And that's just that on that, please don't hurt me. Ooh, it's about to get spicy, literally, because we're in the kitchen. MasterChef? Normal MasterChef, it's just not it for me. Like I watched the old UK version of MasterChef and I'm like, new people every episode, are the exposition required? Like, do you think you are Come Dine With Me or something? If I wanna watch Come Dine With Me-esque type media, I will go watch Come Dine With Me. Sorry for the attitude, I didn't realize that I had that much passion. However, MasterChef Australia, that is iconic. MasterChef Australia, when that started, reset the game, reset the culture. That was so good. The first few seasons of MasterChef Australia, even the All-Star season that recently happened, so good, excellent content. The format is so much better because you start supporting people from the beginning, much like Survivor. And because it's a competition, you want people to win and knock each other out. But because it's a cooking show and it's not vicious at all, there's hardly any drama between people. It's just about the cooking. Delicious. Don't get me wrong, I love a fight. I mean, look what's in the Beyond Iconics here. We've got Flavor of Love, which literally, the best thing about it is the fighting. You guys are just jealous because all of my friends that know me tell me that I remind them of Beyonce. So you can <laughs> But at the end of the day, Sometimes you just want to watch people cook and have fun. And it's about the food you made along the way, but also the prize, which is quite substantial. Toddlers and tiaras, it's on site. Similarly, let's put Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, came from the same franchise, wasn't vibing it at all. Next we have The Only Ways Essex or Towie. Oh, this is tricky. This is tricky because not only did this show begin my obsession of speaking with an accent, the only way is Essex. It's the beginning of Gemma Collins. And that show was one of the first ones that I was never hundred percent sure if it was scripted or not, because it seems like people are having real conversation, but then other times it doesn't. And it just seems like such scripted drama. So I think it's one of those pseudo scripted shows. If it was just about Gemma, it'd be iconic or beyond iconic. But because it's the whole show, it's 1 a.m. Wednesday. Let's do these ratty dating shows. First of all, Love is Blind. I was excited going into it, and then it gave me nothing. It gave me crickets. But the production quality was high enough that I don't want to fight the producers. Not the eyebrow dandruff. Next we have Dance Mums. Dance Mums is beyond iconic. Empty chair, do it solo! Ooh. Now that I think about it, should RuPaul's Drag Race be in Beyond Iconic? Yeah, I'm gonna move it. I'm allowed to do that, it's 2020. It's been a terrible, terrible year. I'm allowed to do what I want, thanks. The people that clicked off at the start because they were fuming, absolutely fuming, that I put that in Iconic. Hmm. The Bachelor, it's crickets. It's just simply not it. The Bachelor is one guy picking from like a group of women, right? Flavor of Love is the same concept, but it's so much better. And if I compare The Bachelor to other dating shows like Married at First Sight, Married at First Sight is better. I would say Married at First Sight is 1am Wednesday. Like I would watch it if it's on. I wouldn't say it's iconic, but it is pretty good TV. Similarly with Love Island, I'd put that in good. Some people would obviously put that in iconic or beyond iconic, but it's my opinion. And here's some drama, ladies. Too Hot to Handle, it's on site. It just did not live up to the hype. The same thing with Love is Blind, except I think Too Hot to Handle was just bad. And then The Bachelorette, crusty, 
crusty, crusty, and let me tell you why. The men, they just can't do it. The crusties, too many crusties. The crusties competing with each other for the one girl, they just cannot bring the drama. So the girl has to like bring all the drama, which is a hectic task and they're not all up to it. Let me just say that. Bachelor in Paradise, it's the poor man's love island. Survivor in general, so Survivor the American series, the original American series, that's beyond iconic. It's such a good game format, it's so entertaining and it spawned so many other shows that have a similar format, even if they don't have the same name. I've also got Australian Survivor here and I would say that that is iconic. My channel would simply not be where it is today without the videos that I did about Australian Survivor. So shout out to Australian Survivor. Let's keep it going with some Big Brother franchise shows. So Big Brother itself, I would say is iconic. I got copyright blocked for making a video about Big Boss India. So it goes to good, just because I have a vendetta against those producers. These producers. And then Celebrity Big Brother, I'm gonna put in Beyond Iconic. And of course, I'm specifically talking about Celebrity Big Brother 17 from 2016. Nah, fuck this, I'm out of here. Get that fire exit door, I'm off. It's just, there's just something about the All-Stars format in any kind of show that just works. Project Runway is iconic. Glad even to dinner with the Kushners. That's one of my OG ones. I got really into that because my mum would watch it and I'd watch it with her and I loved it. Similar kind of thing with Amazing Race. I would say that's iconic. And I still want to go on Amazing Race. If you're an Amazing Race producer, when the 5-2 is done, can you just like, Bring, bring, hang on. Can you just like beep, beep, boot me, call me, beat me, cause you wanna reach me so I can get on that show? But then here things are gonna take a turn because although I said I love the competition format, I cannot stand the Got Talent series. Like I can't do it. I know a lot of people love it and it, the sh like the clips on YouTube get like basically trillions of views. How many people in the world? Seven billion or whatever? It has trillions of views. And how? And why? The talents are like, good, but they're not like, whoa, this is worth 50 or 100 million views. And for what? I don't get it. Maybe I'm jealous. Similarly, American Idol, crickets for me. But Australian Idol, that's iconic. Yes, there is a general trend of me rating Australian versions of shows higher than the international version of shows. A lot of the times, Australia doesn't get on the bandwagon for a show until after a few seasons or a few years. So they've kind of worked out what works best. So then when you watch an Australian version of a show that's been around for ages, it's kind of like an all-stars season. Why am I speaking like I'm on fucking Miss Mojo? Denim, 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 denim now. I think we should go to culinary again and let's do the Gordon Ramsay set. This is gonna be so difficult. So we've got Kitchen Nightmares, Hell's Kitchen, and Hotel Hell. I love Kitchen Nightmares. Me personally, and this is my list, bitch. Kitchen Nightmares, I would say, is beyond iconic. It's Christmas, let's go home. I would say Hell's Kitchen is iconic. Actually, no, Hell's Kitchen's good. Ooh. And then Hotel Hell is iconic. I need to do explaining. I can tell that people are literally raging at me through the screen. Calm down. I think my problem with Hell's Kitchen is that I don't love the format. The main selling point is Gordon Ramsay yelling. And I'm like, if I wanted to see Gordon Ramsay yell, I would just watch Kitchen Nightmares or Hotel Hell. I know I spilled there. Keeping the culinary trend, we've got diners, drive-ins and dives. And who doesn't love a bit of Guy Fieri? But it just, it doesn't hit iconic for me. Wait, is it iconic? I can't. I... Okay, fine. Yes, that is iconic. But then we also have Great British Bake Off, which I'm going to say is beyond iconic. I fucking love Great British Bake Off, that I have such a hard time saying that. Great, mm, Great British Break Off. No, Great British Bake Off, Great British Break Off. Great British Bake Off. I just got dizzy. Similar to MasterChef Australia in that the drama is in the competition and the cooking, not so much the drama between people. My Kitchen Rules might be an Australia specific show. I hate it. I hate My Kitchen Rules because each episode feels like it's seven hours long. And even if you took all the ads out, which there are shitloads of ads, Channel 7, I see you, yeah. If you took all the ads out, I feel like it'd still be like a three hour episode. And for what? If you're a cooking show, you either need to have really solid cooking or a fantastic host or hosts, but My Kitchen Rules just does not do that for me. Super Nanny as a concept is iconic, but it's 1am Wednesday. The Block. 
this may be another Australian show, it's cricket. I don't know. I think it's just, I don't get into those construction building type shows. I'm just like, I want to see the end product. And I loved like the listing shows where they go through and look at listings. Actually speaking of, I have million dollar listing here and I'm going to put that as 1am Wednesday. Cause to me, it's about the end product. I don't really care about how they built it. Okay. Wife swap is a terrible show. The face, I would say that's good. Rock of love. It's kind of like flavor of love discount version, like the red dot version. It does have some iconic moments, but I'm going to say that it's 1am Wednesday. This next set, they all have the same premise, but in a different kind of genre. Four weddings, there's four weddings. They all go to each other's weddings and they vote on who has the best wedding. And then four in a bed, it's like Airbnbs and come dine with me. We all know what that is, surely. Crickets, crickets, good. Say yes to the dress. This doesn't really make sense for me because I'm so like, I, no, that sounds bad. I was gonna say I don't care about weddings. I, if I, but then this show, I've seen so much of it and for what? So I'm gonna put that in good. <sighs> Next we have the show Next on site. Mystery Diners, bitch I love Mystery Diners. I love Mystery Diners. It's so ridiculous. I'm gonna give you three words and I'm gonna give you two words. The Simple Life, Beyond Iconic. Bad Girls Club, Ooh, this is gonna be controversial. I think a lot of people would be expecting me to put this in Beyond Iconic or Iconic, but I'm actually gonna put it in good. Then we've got Australia's Next Top Model. I, you know what? I was just kind of crickets about it. I don't think it's the same level as America's Next Top Model, which I'm gonna put in Beyond Iconic because the sheer amount of pop culture impact that came from that. And just in terms of Tyra Banks as a host, all the drama, the makeovers, and like all the shady shit that they did on that show, it's beyond iconic. I would say Iron Chef is good. Keeping up with the Kardashians is iconic, obviously. Is it beyond iconic? I don't think so. If I was ranking a best of compilation, that would be beyond iconic. Real Housewives franchise is iconic. Real Housewives of Melbourne is beyond iconic. So what I've done here, Real Housewives um, franchise is like everywhere and then Real Housewives of Melbourne I only could put one picture in but I'm talking about Melbourne and Sydney I would say the Australian Real Housewives series are beyond iconic the American ones are fantastic too and there's some ripper moments but it just simply does not compare to Real Housewives of Melbourne Real Housewives of Sydney is fantastic too Real Housewives of Melbourne specifically outrageous the accents and the swearing just completely pull you out of it and it's so great Kid Nation it's on site I would fight the producers yeah. Jersey Licious. I don't know if people know Jersey Licious. Jersey Licious was one of my mum's favorite reality TV shows. So therefore I saw a lot of it and I really enjoyed it too. I would say that it's iconic. World's Strictest Parents, I think is good. And then The Mole, I'm gonna put this in beyond iconic because I'm manifesting. I'm manifesting The Mole Australia coming back and then them casting me on it. Because if you're not aware, The Mole is basically among us. Am I wrong? No, I'm not wrong. If you're not aware, the premise of the mole is that you have a group of people and then one of them is trying to sabotage everything that everyone else is trying to do. And it just seems like so much fun and it's a show that I would definitely like to go on. And with a couple bad bitches that have ripped the party of Quaver the Cupid, I'm Nick Lombardi, pull up in the space coupe. I'm a liquid Marty. I can actually afford to get a pink Bugatti. Yeah, I snapped, 100% I snapped. I say that at the end of all my lists, but I think I especially snapped on this one. And I'm so proud of my choice to take Drag Race out of Iconic and put it into Beyond Iconic because it just makes sense. It just Oh, I've spoken so much in the last like 45 minutes. My mouth is like, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you agree or disagree, let me know in the comments. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I much appreciate it. Thanks for watching all my videos in 2020 and I'll talk to you next year. <laughs> Peace out, bye. Welcome to the end screen. Here you will find another video for you to watch and a link to easily subscribe to my channel. So make sure you subscribe to my channel.